You're listening to the Ordinary Joe's Podcast with Joe D and Eric B. Ordinary Joe's Podcast. All right. We are back with another Ordinary Joe's Podcast talking about an ordinary person who kind of made it big in the world of martial arts. And if you guys are watching on YouTube, you see the shirt I'm wearing. You guys should know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the man, the myth, Dragon. Mr. Bruce Lee. I can't find a Bruce Lee sound, so we'll use a Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla. I was trying to find the Godzilla thing to save my life, and I couldn't find it at all. Um, but man, yeah, Bruce Lee, that's the topic for today. We're going to touch on his movies, his lifestyle, and, and how if he touched you in any way that made you change your life in a in a certain way that's you know probably what we're going to discuss today so let's get this going i am eric b and i'm joe d and we are the ordinary Ordinary joes Joes. was there a delay was there a delay there uh i don't know i never know (laughs) it sounded pretty much pretty cool but again yeah you're right i I don't don't know if there's a delay there (laughs) you know the internet can never the tell. Ordinary Joe's. Joe's, Joe's, Joe's. Joe's, Joe's. Like today, I'm like, oh man, it's so cool. It's perfect. Tomorrow, when I go listen to it, I'm like, dude, I was like three seconds behind him. What the hell? And I'm just staring blankly. Joe's like, <laughs> wait, wait, what? what? We're doing it? What? Oh, now, now we're doing it. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> um, All right, man. Bruce Lee, man. Joe, go ahead, as you always do, kindly kick us off with your. Yeah. Bruce Lee's story or movie your favorite? Well, I'm I'm gonna start by first off, like I I had to do a little research because, um, you know Bruce Lee was obviously before my time. I saw his movies, but I wanted to kind of like see if I could learn a little bit about him before we start talking about him. And one thing that like tripped me out that I had no clue about him. I thought I'd I've heard everything. He was a famous like child actor yeah. in China. Like his yeah. first movie, he was three months old. He he was in the, what was it the Golden Gate Girl? Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I watched this documentary about him and they had all this, this footage of him as a kid and all these shows. And I'm like, I'm tripping out. Like, wait a minute. How, how, how do we not know more about this? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I want, you know, I want to say if you're a badass martial artist, like Bruce Lee was, mm. And you have these footage of you dancing. I don't know if you want that kind of leaked out, right? Yeah, but he, he seemed, I don't know, like he grew up, uh, like again, like all this stuff. I didn't know his his dad was in the opera. Yeah. He he grew up in, you know, movies and things like that was his thing. I, like as much, put it this way, I guess I didn't realize he liked acting as much as he he loved yeah. martial arts. Yeah. Like that was what was kind of, I, I figured it was like a, you know, like a Jet Li sort of situation where he's good with martial arts and they just throw him into movies. But it was like, no, this dude's like been That's, acting. Yeah. Like it's it's hilarious. But he 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 at one point, I guess his dad really didn't want him to get into acting. But um, you know, he uh he was so good that he just was like, all right, well, I can't stop him. <laughs> you know? I mean, there, like, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that that was just like one of the things I found out about. Him. But my first. Honestly, my first experience with Bruce Lee was uh, my dad got me a skateboard one year when I was a kid. Nice. I was like seven, eight years old. These were like those fat boards that were shaped like a like a gold like the goldfish yeah, yeah cracker, yeah, like yeah. really fat and funny shape. That feminine shape almost, right? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the on the bottom of it, it had a picture of Bruce Lee, like in his, you know, fighting stance with all these graphics and all that. And that was my, literally my first experience with Bruce Lee. And it wasn't until after getting that, that I actually started watching his, his movies. Cause my brother is a huge fan. So he had all of them on VHS and stuff. So let me ask you this, man, growing up in New York, did you guys, I know you, we we would have this thing on, it was always on a Friday or Saturday night. I remember it's always late night. I want to say like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock where it was just this one channel that showed nothing but martial arts. And did you guys ever get lucky? I mean, I want, I want to say I got lucky a few times where they actually showed a Bruce Lee film Mm -hmm. other than, you know, 
you know, Jackie Chan or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but did you guys have that growing up in New York? Yeah, we did. For us, with it was on Sundays though. Okay. Um, Sundays they would it would I think I don't know if it was like a certain time slot if they would rotate because I, I remember just being on different occasions. But Sundays would be when they'd have like Godzilla, yeah, King Kong, and then all the all the kung fu flicks. Nice. And they I I think they I don't know maybe it was on on the East Coast they they try to stick to the more well known you know stars so we yeah, did yeah. get to see you know like bruce lee and and some of those like old ones but like i said i was a kid but my my older brother rocky shout out to rocky he's uh he's about your age uh he's a little older he was like immersed into that whole yeah. 70s kung fu yeah. culture i mean he had magazines he, he literally had ninja stars like real ninja stars that he ordered from this magazine at like the age of 16 right he's ordering weapons off <laughs> off of magazines and we had those uh old school 80s fake wood panels in yeah, the living room yeah. and that was our our target <laughs> with the, yeah with the ninja star. obviously I, I wasn't allowed to do it but i would watch intently but <laughs> you'd yeah. wait till they all fall asleep and joe's looking through their clothes <laughs> yeah. <Down line. laughs> yeah but but yeah but for sure we did we we were lucky enough to get the movies on sundays which was cool see we always got we, we would get bruce lee i would say once every now and then but we'd always get those old school you know high flying you know the the mm-hmm. old school martial arts yeah. where you're like how are these guys up here for two minutes kicking <laughs> yeah. each other's ass yeah, yeah. but every now and then we got lucky and we would get a bruce lee but it would always be like his earlier movies his non-popular mm-hmm. movies right because you know yeah. we did mention before we got on there was only four that made it mainstream but there was mm-hmm. a few that wasn't really mainstream but man that was you know that, that those were memorable times watching mm-hmm. bruce lee back in the days man yeah um, yeah definitely and it was i, I I kind of feel like he was the reason for that whole like martial arts craze back in the seventies here in the States. Yeah. Because I mean, you, what, was, what was that movie? Uh, Return of the dragon, you know, with Bruce Leroy, the, the kid in the hood. Like I knew so many people like him. <laughs> what was that movie? Was that, there wasn't return of the dragon. Right? It was the last or, dragon. The last dragon. Yeah. 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 Don't Bruce Leroy. Oh that, my so. God. Yeah. But I knew so many kids like that growing up that were like, you know, they swore they were Bruce Lee and they would dress the part. And I mean, they were getting beat up every other day because they couldn't fight. like. Bruce oh, Lee. my God. We had a kid in high school. Oh, no, it was an elementary school, man. And uh, shout out to my boy, Larry, because he don't remember this. Dude's name was Lee. His name was Lee. That's all his name was Lee. So it's like, it? damn, I was like, do you know karate? He's like, yeah, you know, it was like, you know, all this stuff. But he didn't really know shit. You know, he's one of those kids where his name was Lee, but You're his right. la- his first name was Lee. <laughs> it oh, wasn't so was like Lee, Lee Lee or no 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 his like oh, Lee his... it was like Lee gotcha. Wong or something gotcha. like that right. Gotcha. But he he yeah he was one of those kids that's like you know I know kung fu I know karate you know Bruce Lee's my my uncle and I'm like I guess he was one of those self taught martial artists. But 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 as soon as he had to fight somebody yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, left hook couldn't really stop that kick that he was trying yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I didn't have a lot of faith in martial arts. And I think a lot of it was because so many people faked like they knew martial yeah. arts. So I would always see those guys get beat up. You know, yeah. the, the they get yeah. into the stance. You're like, ooh, he's, he's about to kick your ass. And then yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, all right, what, what are you doing, bro? You know? Yeah. But I mean, I mean, one growing up. We, you know, growing up, me growing up, man, and you mm. know, I'm, I'm I'm older than you. There wasn't really a lot of places that we can go to to learn how to do kung yeah. fu. And after watching shows like Bruce Lee's movies, you want you don't want to be like, this is how you stand, this is how you punch, and you're doing that shit for like four months, right, dude? You want to yeah. go out there and you want to start kicking people's ass. <laughs> yeah. You want to start learning how to block. So when you sit there and you're sitting there like. Dude, it's been four months, and I'm you're still teaching me how to do this horse stand, man. I'm, yeah. I'm done with this. <laughs> you know, it's like as yeah. a kid, you didn't want to learn the basics, man. You wanted to just mm-hmm. get out there, give me my Bruce Lee gear, and let yeah. me go out there with my Chinese sh- slippers or Chinese shoes, and, yeah. and let me go kick people's ass. I mean, it's because he, he made it look so cool, though. Yeah, he you did. Know? Like he his, did. I've watched so many, like, you know, uh, Five Deadly Venoms and like yeah. all, all those old classic ones. And, and there was never that lead character that was just had that, I don't know, that swag he had, yeah. you know. Yeah. And come to find out, he was uh, uh, a fan of um, Muhammad Ali. And a lot of that, you know, he, he wanted to 
so again, I, I found out a lot of stuff about him. He he wanted people to accept him as a lead actor, yeah. you know, in, in, in the States, because he was already accepted in Hong Kong in and Hong Kong, a star yeah. over there. And so he he was looking for different ways. And, you know, if anybody that knows about his martial arts style, he was always one that liked to use different aspects from different styles. Yeah. He didn't he didn't like the word style being stuck, you know, to one thing. So he loved Muhammad Ali and he loved his boxing style and how fluid he was and the way yeah. he moved. And that was part of why he added that into his kind of repertoire. But one, because of how effective it was in fighting. And two, it was recognizable for Americans as something they can relate to, you know, so yeah. like he's, he's fighting Chuck Norris and he's, you know, gets hit and then he like finally switches it up and starts that jab. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to do it. He's, he's going to kick it. his ass. <laughs> I mean, his whole thing was, Remember when, when we, if you watch any of his movies, even heard of his documentaries, his whole thing was Kung Fu, the way he learned was more self-defense and mm-hmm. it wasn't more the, the offensive style, right? So it's like by the time you're already defending this guy or this person, this person's already pretty much kicking your ass because you're too busy defending. Mm-hmm. So he came up with his Jeet Kune Do, which is, you know, um, the way of the intercepting fist, which is more the offensive style. Like, mm-hmm. you know, hey, this guy's getting ready to attack me. I know he is. So let me kick his ass first before right. he can even think about attacking me. So he did change the way martial arts. And, and, you know, if you watch any of those movies, they didn't want him to do that. They didn't want mm-hmm. him to teach the Westerners, you know. Um, right. I'm not considered a Westerner because I'm from the Philippines. But... Mm-hmm. You know the whites, as they yeah. said it back in the '60s mm-hmm. and '70s. They didn't want him to teach. They he didn't want him to teach yeah. that. But he was more like, you know, fuck you, I'm here. Um, mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it was more money, right? I think he mm-hmm. he wanted to need he needed a way to pay his way still here in the United mm-hmm. States. So and he's tired of dishwashing. He was tired of yeah. doing all that stuff. So he just decided, hey, let me teach a couple people how to you know how to do some kind of martial arts, and it kind of grew. Yeah. And, you know, that's where the whole controversy, we talked about this in our conspiracy theory, like, you know, how he really died and, and right. who really killed him. But, man, he, if it wasn't for him, and this is a question I'm asking for you right now. If mm-hmm. it wasn't for Bruce Lee, if Bruce Lee, we don't know who the hell Bruce Lee is, right? Do mm-hmm. you think martial arts today would be the way it is right now if it wasn't for him? No, not at all. I think, um, I mean, I think eventually it would have made its way here. but. Yeah. I don't think how it is today. I don't think it would have been. He he like he exposed a lot of people to martial arts. It's kind of like like uh, uh, soccer, football, right? You know, football. it's probably one of the biggest sports in the world. Not so much here in the states. I kind of feel that's how martial arts would be today if it wasn't for him. Yeah, you know, because yeah. he. I mean, that wasn't really even a thing to have. You know, a, a leading Asian. Yeah. A uh, star, um, action star, uh, you know, a m- whole movie about martial arts. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't a thing. But then, you know, after him, you look at everybody you had. And it wasn't just Asian people. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Everybody. So, um, yeah, I, no, mean, I don't, I think he, he he's a big reason. Yeah. Know, I mean, it is, how it is. Hollywood, Hollywood is big on typecasting and, and they still are doing that. You know, um, the whole, like him, I don't know if you heard the story. Right? In mm-hmm. the '80s, he came up with a movie concept called Kung Fu, mm-hmm. and it was a guy who was wandering the United States trying to find his brother, and he wanted to be that guy. But mm-hmm. who did they get? They got David Carradine, yeah. because just like you said, they weren't ready for an, a, a a leading male Asian yeah. actor yeah. back in the days. And, and, you know, it was even, even back then it was even hard to find an African, African American person to be mm-hmm. a leading character oh, yeah. in any, any show yeah. because Hollywood was so typecast on who they wanted, what they wanted. Mm-hmm. And if they're going to get an Asian guy, they're just going to put this big heavy makeup on, you know, one of the famous characters in Hollywood yeah. and make him be the Asian guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was in the documentary I watched. I mean, it was ridiculous. They were showing clips of, you know, movies, back from the 40s, 50s, and 60s that, you know, the the main character was Asian and they had a white person and they had, yeah. like, terrible makeup on. And it was, like, oh, it was, it was so cringe. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To watch. And, I mean, the same thing. I mean, my dad, he, he loves and hates West Side Story, you know, because there's yeah. literally, like, one 
one i don't even know if she's puerto rican but one hispanic actress in that whole movie the rest is just yeah. essentially white people in brown face you know and the only reason why they got her and i know who your dad's talking about because i have to mm -hmm. do a book about that is she was the only one that can speak spanish, spanish. at that time mm -hmm. and you know when you when you hired a non-hispanic person the spanish didn't sound authentic enough so they had to hire mm -hmm. this person yeah. and yeah so i mean it, it it sucks but it's what it was back then you know it's like yeah it's what it was back then. You know, it's like we, yeah. we, we watch movies now and if you see a movie now and it's about China, but they got a bunch of, you know, non-Chinese <laughs> people there. We're like, dude, I'm not going to watch this show. Yeah, like, what the, <laughs> what the hell is this? What the hell is this, dude? Yeah. No, you yeah, know? definitely. There, there was an interview with, with his daughter and she was saying how she doesn't think he really knew like the machine he was coming up against when he, cause in his mind, he's like, I'm just, I'm going to go to us and, and make movies. Yeah. His, I, I forget uh, which was his, his first might've been the big boss, like his first, first big film in, in Hong Kong. Big that, boss it was. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that took off and he was a little surprised. And then when he had continued success, he's like, wait a minute, I, I could do this. You know, yeah, and he yeah. wanted to come to the States and I, I he was just kind of naive. I think not that he didn't know about racism here or anything yeah, like no. that, but he just, I don't know, he had so much confidence in himself that he felt like, you know, I, I could do this. And another thing I found out that I didn't know was that, uh, like you said, he only had like four, you know, real big mainstream yeah. movies. And Enter the Dragon came out after he passed. Yeah, yeah. I had no clue. So he never really even got to see how the big finished he, product. Yeah. he became. He became, you know, he... he, he you know, it's bittersweet. He fulfilled what it was he wanted to, to be that leading man, to have everybody love him and all this, but he wasn't around to, to really, yeah. really see it and feel it. So it's kind of like, oh man, that's rough. And that's, if we have to talk about my favorite, that's probably my favorite one of all the four mainstream that we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And only because, you know, he died, um, July 20th, 1973. And that movie was released in 1973. Yeah, and August, you, yeah, August. So he died uh, a month before. So we're. I'm thinking. I I try to put myself in his mind every time I watch that movie. It's like, dude, what was going through your head mm -hmm. when you made this film or when you were making this film, and not being able to see the finished product was like, man, that's you know that's heartbreaking because yeah. it's like yeah. you started a project. This movie was supposed to get him back into the United States. Yeah. You know, you have some you have um some main characters in this movie, some American characters. That's like, okay, if we can get this guy in and um. What's that big, tall black guy's name? God, I had him all Kareem pulled up. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? No, 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 no. In, uh, Enter, the, <laughs> Enter the Dragon. Oh, Enter the Dragon. Uh, I don't, I, I can't uh, Jackie, ah, God, I got to pull him up. Um, But yeah, you know, when you get these mainstream characters and you put them in a, in a Asian show or Asian movie, martial mm -hmm. arts movie, yeah, you're going to get Westerners who'll be like, well, you know, dude, if this big black guy can do it, so can I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let me ask you a question, me, because I don't know if you you remember. I mean, you were pretty young too, but in uh, which is the one where he fights um, Chuck Norris? That was um, the Way of the Dragon. The Way of the Dragon. Okay. Yes. Was Chuck Norris already like the movie star Chuck Norris? Because in the yeah. credits it says uh american karate champ chuck yeah. norris you know and then yeah. and then it, the way it describes the the actors and actresses by the way is fucking hilarious yeah. it's like starlet whatever and it's so it gives a little description and the way they described him didn't give him like the chuck norris props i figured yeah, they yeah. would and he was really young so i was just yeah. curious see see in the way of the dragon just exactly the way you described it nobody knew who the hell chuck norris was right okay um you just see this white guy. He's built so much bigger than Bruce Lee, mm -hmm. but he's more, he's as agile and he's so flexible. You're like, Oh yeah. shit. What the hell? <laughs> you know, hairy as fuck. Hairy as hell. Yeah. And there's that scene in the movie where Bruce Lee actually rips his chest hair off. Right. I was like, ouch. <laughs> I would have, I would have quit right there. <laughs> done. Like you got it. You want Time out, man. Time out, man. <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> yeah, he, it's like he all blows it. To his hands and <laughs> gross. Like, oh, I'm really hoping that was fake, man. I'm really yeah, hoping that was fake. You it know. looked kind of real, though. <laughs> but yeah, um, so we didn't know who Chuck Norris was. And like a mm. lot of people like, who's this white guy, right? Like, who's this yeah, guy? Yeah. And he's just as good. And and 
I think it was later on when we realized, dude, that was one of Bruce Lee's, you know, this after Bruce Lee's death already. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, man, Bruce Lee actually taught Chuck Norris how, some karate skills. So I don't know if Bruce Lee taught Chuck Norris from the beginning mm-hmm. or if he just taught him some stuff. And Chuck Norris is already a karate champ in the United yeah, States, you know? Yeah, I think I think he was already a karate champ, but, you know, Bruce Lee was really, like, took him and and yeah. like we mentioned Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and there's a few other people yeah. like his first yeah. students and they were really his first students because like you were saying no one else wanted to come to him it was, yeah. it was Americans that were coming to him because he was kind of you know outcast for 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 teaching the the yeah. westerners and stuff so the guy's name was Jim Kelly Jim oh, Kelly Jim Kelly, yeah. Jim Ke- Jim Kelly. Player, right? yeah uh I don't know if he was football was he yeah he could have been a football player back so. in the days yeah and so. then um John Saxon who was Roper so those were the two Americans that that were in that movie that was supposedly going to bring him back to the American scenery but you know again he died before um that could happen um let me ask you this what do you think the world would be right now if Bruce Lee was you know if he lived longer than the age of 32 mm-hmm. do you think we would have seen more than four big budget movies yeah definitely I, I i don't um you know it's kind of one of those things and you think about it it's like you know uh, uh famous people we've lost to, to yeah. Jimi hendrix the tupac's the big easy yeah. you wonder you know how much of them becoming this legend is because they died so young yeah, you know, yeah. like i i'm i'm confident you know he would have continued to make movies it was obvious he loved movies and martial arts um I think he would have, he would have been like, sort of like the the Rock or Kevin Hart. I think you know he was so likable, and I feel like we would have seen him everywhere. He'd be on TV and and those yeah. things. Now, would he have the legend that he has now? I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of hard yeah. to tell. I want to say he would just because he was just so, such a one of a kind person. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Let but, me ask you this, man. This mm-hmm. is just me playing. I'm going to play devil's advocate, okay? I'm mm-hmm. a big Bruce Lee fan, so if you guys are watching or listening, don't get me wrong. I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. Mm-hmm. But do you think he was a little too cocky when he <laughs> came to his martial arts and his movie making? I mean, that's what kind of drew America away from him because he was too cocky. You know, it's mm-hmm. like, hey, I got this idea. I want to do this. He was really pushing it on the Americans. The Americans were like, dude, who the hell are you? You know, we don't mm-hmm. know who you are. So... If he was still around, you know, or outlived his his death, do yeah. you think people would have got annoyed with him because he was too cocky? No, no. I mean, that's a that's a pretty American trait. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Mean, I feel like you know we've we've seen a lot of like even prime. I'll go back to The Rock. You know, his his character, The Rock, was really cocky and yeah. and and big. You know, uh, full of himself. I think a lot of Bruce Lee's characters are cocky. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I think because he's so confident as he is, I think some people might have maybe confused his his characters that he played, you know, uh, for, for how he really was. Because when you look at the when they the people that they interviewed that were around him and, and, and spoke to him, they said how, you know, sweet, nice, nice of a guy he was and, you know, that sort of thing, real, real giving sort of guy. So... I don't know. Um, but again, though, again, devil's advocate. I'm just yeah. saying this. Were you, were people just saying that because they were afraid he might kick his ass or kick their ass, you know? Could be that too, you yeah. know? I mean, because <laughs> he, he, you know, he, yeah, he did some cool movie stuff, but he could actually still fight, you yeah. know? So. I mean, it's, I'm only saying this because in all mm-hmm. the movies, in the documentary movies or even the filmography movies, Birth of, Dra- Birth of the Dragon and The Dragon with Jason Scott Lee, Mm-hmm. His non Bruce Lee movie character, his regular person, they mm-hmm. always made him kind of that arrogant. Fuck you! I'm gonna do it this way because this is the mm-hmm. way I want to do it. So I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of that came from Linda, his wife. Like, hey, mm-hmm. this is how he was. This is how he acted. Mm-hmm. So it just makes me wonder. I mean, again, big fan of Bruce Lee. I wouldn't be wearing him on my chest right now if I wasn't. But it yeah. just makes me wonder sometimes if he was still here and still around with us. How many people would be like you or like, dude, he'd, he'd be this and this mm-hmm. would be perfect? Or how many people would be like, dude, Bruce Lee's so fucking arrogant. I'm tired of this shit. You know, it's yeah. like. I mean, you know? he could he could have been because the thing was, 
he was a like we said before he was a superstar before he came here yeah you know they they were they were saying if if you did and this i'm just taking this from the document this was the documentary i saw was from uh 30 for 30 by the way it was uh be water amazing yeah. hands yeah. down the best uh bruce lee documentary i've seen and um i'm sorry i lost my train of thought what we were talking about <laughs> bruce lee 30 for 30 you're talking about the um, documentary you watched yeah yeah but uh, being arrogant awesome. oh yeah yeah <laughs> Um, they were saying that if you, you know, back then, if you made a million dollars in a movie in Hong Kong, you were a big star. If yeah. you made two million, you were a superstar. And that was equivalent to like around, I don't know, 100, 120 grand now. A lot. He, a lot. Yeah. yeah. He, he made over three million his first movie yeah. that he did in Hong Kong. So I could see him having some sort of uh, cockiness and arrogance when he comes here. And then if you feel like, what I have is is like really good, and yeah. people aren't giving it. You know, it's it's a chance. I could see him kind of coming across like, you know, a little bullyish. Like, wait, yeah, a minute, yeah. this is my shit. But I mean, I think it was also what made him kind of cool. I think it's also what people it's, liked. It's funny because I I mentioned that to you is because there was something where I read. This is a while back that I read it. And it just it just jogged my memory. He gave the United States a big fuck you. When after he did the big boss and it made all that money, like you said, he did the very next year, he came out with the fist fury. Um, then all the way where he, he finished it with enter the dragon. So from 71, 72 to 73, he made two films in 72, one film in 73. He was the king in China or, or mm-hmm. Hong Kong, wherever he was. Everybody wanted a piece of Bruce Lee, all the Chinese directors. So then now you have that one American who said, no, Bruce is not going to work, who actually reached out to him again and said, hey, let's get you back here. And he kind of gave someone the big fuck you. I'm not ready to come back here. This is what I'm doing right now. So I'm assuming that's when people were saying he was being arrogant or he was having that kind of arrogancy. It was probably yeah. during that time where Mm -hmm. i'm untouchable in china you can't mess with me in china yeah you know so you know maybe a lot of americans were like well you know we don't want to mess with him he's too arrogant for us you know kind of you know give him that bad name the way yeah and i mean you 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 know how how especially back then how racist things were you know if you you couldn't be confident or arrogant because yeah that was looked down upon, right? Like yeah. again, Muhammad Ali, right? He was very vocal. He he called himself the best, and and he'd make fun of his, the people he was fighting and do all his rhyming and rapping and all that stuff. And they hated him. I mean, yeah. they were trying yeah. to literally trying to get him killed. And then yeah. you know, you look at the person he was going against, Sonny Liston, who was like the 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 perfect picture of what they wanted a black American to be, you know. And it was the same thing with Bruce Lee, like. You know, Asian Americans, even before they were called Asian Americans, right? They they were given, they were typecast, even yeah. just in the communities, right? Very docile. They were made fun of in movies and had the big glasses. And and after uh, World War Two, you know, the the whole uh, Japanese. whatever those those camps were for the for the Japanese, yeah. essentially concentration camps. I mean, they weren't killing anyone, but still, it is what it is. Internment camps, yeah, yeah, and so you know, he didn't fit that bill. He wasn't the, you know, the docile, quiet, uh, yes, sir. Like, so I think that is probably more of what they didn't like about it as far as arrogance. Yeah. I mean, I get, yeah. I mean, the dude was born in San Francisco. The the guy was born in Chinese (laughs) hospital on Stockton street here in San Francisco. So yeah, you didn't get to live that American lifestyle because his mom and dad brought him back to to Hong Mm -hmm. Kong, but he was technically a citizen Mm -hmm. um, of the United States. So yeah, I would be a little arrogant. I mean, you yeah. know, hell, I would be a little arrogant. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I know I'm the greatest fighter. I know there's not one person that can beat me, you know, if they, you know, really tried. Um, right. Yeah, I would be arrogant too. You know, it's like now I made four films. You guys want me back? Where were you when in the '60s when I needed you guys? Mm-hmm. Right? And where were you yeah. guys then? It's like I asked you guys for favors. You stole my movie. You gave it to some <laughs> white guy that kind of looks Asian, but he's not really. You gave yeah. it to him. Where that was my that was my story. I mean, that to yeah. me, it's like there's every reason for you to be oh, the arrogant person that you are because yeah. you're trying to show a big country like America. I did this. I didn't need your help. Yep. I did this all by myself with the help of my people. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. now you see big money in this. Now you want to, you want to come back, you know? Yeah. I would, I'd be the same exact way. I'd be the same yeah. arrogant person that I am yeah. or that I he, I, he was. I, I don't blame him. And then the other thing too, is like, you know, like I said, he's, he was acting from when he was a kid. So it really yeah. wasn't even that big of a thing there, there's a, there's a, a part where they were talking to his wife and she's like, um, and they were dating and it was a group of friends and they were all like, it was a, it was a, a black guy, white guy, Asian guy and, and, and their girlfriends. And what they would do is they would switch their girlfriends. So each, everyone was with a different race Wow. and they would, they would purposely go out like that just to see if anybody would, you know, would say anything. Same thing. <laughs> right. And so he, he takes his, uh, his now wife, they go to the movies and it, um, it was one of his movies prior to his martial arts movies and um i think it came out in the 60s or something like that but for whatever reason it was, it was airing here in the states and they go to see that see the movie and she's watching it and she like her mind is blown she's like dude like is that you <laughs> like are you and he's just like yeah and she's like like what the f-? like <laughs> you're a movie star and he was just like it, to him it wasn't a big deal he was like that was my job as a kid growing up that was what i did yeah. so you know like yeah i mean he had think he had the right to be to be a little arrogant and just yeah. people didn't like it but he I backed mean, it up though i mean yeah i mean yeah he did he ba- he hella backed it up you know it's like you know that one fight in birth of the dragon where um the a fight that supposedly never happened where he fought you know wong jack man um he wasn't really arrogant then you know, mm-hmm. he was telling the kid, if you watch the movie, he's like, dude, I don't want to fight this guy. He goes, why do I have to prove that I'm better than him? Yeah. But it was the white guy, the American that says, well, you said you can do this better than everyone else. Now they're giving you someone that supposedly is better than you, but you don't want to fight him. But yeah. he was like, there's no point. Yeah. What's the yeah. point? What's the reason? So that when he ended up beating or supposedly beating Wong Jack Man, that's when the whole yeah. Birth of the Dragon came out because... Yeah. Now he can actually beat the people that, you know, they're saying right. that he can't beat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's always been a running theme in his movies, even if it didn't apply to his character that he was playing. But it was yes. always that martial arts is for self-defense. And that, yeah. That's yeah. your last resort. You, you only use it when they give you no other choice to. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes he had characters that were out for revenge and whatever. But that's the movie stuff. But the, the main theme of his movies was always to, you know, you don't use it as an offensive yeah yeah i mean i mean even in the movie the last dragon that we were talking about you know bruce Bruce leroy how many times was he's just walking away Mm -hmm. um not wanting to fight you know i mean that's the first thing if you ever take in a martial art class the first thing they tell you is if you guys are looking to use this to beat somebody up then you guys are in the wrong class you know Mm -hmm. because the first step is to defend yourself you know that's what this whole thing is to defend um but man he changed and glorified martial arts in the way he does things from his quick punches to like you said his muhammad ali floating style of you know mm-hmm. um he backed it up man i mean it's yeah. like I, I can't think of a person now you know we always try to compare you know apples to apples right it's like is there somebody now i mean even when like jet lee came out and jackie mm-hmm. chan came out it's like yeah. can these guys beat bruce lee you know we're talking yeah. about one-on-one fight can they yeah i mean if if and and i'm only going off of the fact that he actually studied martial arts if any if i would put him against anyone i guess it would be jet lee because he did martial arts before acting yes and so uh, but I, do i think he would win no but i mean i think that would maybe as far as martial arts stars go i can't think of anyone else off the top of my head that i think that would have been a good fight man watching jet lee and bruce lee at their prime fighting it at two different styles of fighting too you know it's like god that would have been a good fight man tell you what i would have liked to see though a movie with jackie chan and bruce lee I think yeah. that would have been they're, yeah. they're two huge larger than life funny yeah. guys extremely talented and i just feel like they would have you know bounced so much stuff off of each other yeah like that that would have been that would have been great to see but see i can't jackie chan has that comical person in him and when you see jackie chan the goofy face mm-hmm. the way he fights you already know there's going to be some scenes that are funny can mm-hmm. you actually see bruce lee saying this is i want to do the same exact thing you're doing but in the more serious because in the, all his movies he was serious in all his movies you well know? go back and watch way of the dragon 
Okay. If you look, it's actually labeled as an action comedy. Okay. Now, when I was watching it this morning, I was like, this is fucking terrible. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> the movie was so bad. They had like cartoon sound effects and the, <laughs> the, the cinematography was way off. There was just weird pauses. And, and, and I was just like, what the fuck? And, and I looked it up like, wait, was this like <laughs> one of like made one early on before you had knew what he was doing? And sure enough, it says it's a it's a, you know, a, a comedy action comedy action comedy but he's playing the straight man and then if you watch it again and you see the characters you see some of the really bad wigs that these guys oh have my god like, you know it's like yeah, okay yeah, yeah. i i get it so i i think and and his movies prior to his martial arts movies where you see his range where he's literally acting and and yeah again like i'm surprised the stuff isn't more out there um i think he i think they could have done something good yeah. I, I do. I, f- I feel like he he really still hadn't had the chance to show what he could do acting like martial arts. We knew he was the best, but yeah, I think he had some acting chops that he didn't get a chance to really show. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I think in Enter the Dragon is is where he he wanted to take that next step when it comes mm-hmm. to I mean, they sh- in that movie. He did show some acting, some acting skills, some yeah. some lines that he did. And, you know, again, it would have been it would have been nice to see him you know, survive past the age of 32 to see what else he could have gave us, you know, moving forward. But man, man, I mean, it's just, geez. You know what? It's a thing I noticed too. Like I never understood why in some of these movies, they dub the English part, Mm. right? Like he obviously you can tell when they're speaking Cantonese or whatever Mandarin. And then they're also dubbing the English. And what it was, was because these movies were made in Hong Kong, they did have people speaking English in them, but when they dubbed over the 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 Chinese part, they if they would have left the sound from the original movie, it wouldn't have gone together. So they just had to dub the whole thing. <laughs> so that's why you have like you know these terrible voices where it's yeah. like, oh, you killed my brother, <laughs> and the lips, and then. It's, you never can see me. And you know it's funny you mentioned that too cuz in some of the Bruce Lee lines where I don't know if Bruce Lee was speaking in Chinese or if he was mm-hmm. speaking in English but they dubbed it with his voice anyways. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. like, you know, and I guess back then they didn't have the technology to they're like, "Hey, let's just use his yeah. real audio and yeah. let's just dub everybody else." I think yeah. it was easier to just like fuck it, let's just dub everybody. Yeah. yeah, it was because the the dubbed audio and the original audio, you would have heard a clear change when it would switch from the yeah. original. So yeah. they just like screw it, we're just gonna do the whole thing. And I don't know who the hell they got to do. It seemed like the same guy did everybody's I mean, voice. Everybody, <laughs> everybody was Fred from Scooby Doo, man. That was the same voice. It was Casey Kasem the whole time. <laughs> I was like, what is guys? I was like, I seriously could have done a better job than these but ju- guys. But just imagine, dude, just imagine what we do now here when we mm-hmm. do this podcast and we have to sync our audio to the video. Mm-hmm. You got that one, two, three person sitting in this room and they're they're watching the storyline and they're like, Okay, this is what you're gonna say when he says this. All right. Yeah. Okay, Frank, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, and then like the 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 like th- what they thought Asian people sounded like was it was like so racist. Just God, like, it was the one, just... the one movie. Which movie was it, man? I want to say it could have been The Way of the Dragon, could have been Fist of Fear, but you had that skinny Asian boss, right? The skinny Asian oh, Chinese boss, yes. right? Yes, who's in, he, he, that guy's in a couple movies, but he's yeah, in a couple movies, yeah. but he always they always give him that fucked up. Well, so <laughs> we're gonna go find him, hey? Yeah, it's like. I, <laughs> Does he really sound like that? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, this guy probably sounds nothing no. like this because he no. was in Way of the Dragon. I think I saw him in, in the Big Boss. Or, or could have been one, the Big Boss. One yeah. of the other ones. Yeah, just a few. Yeah, yeah. He's in a few of them, and I was yeah. just like, why? Why do they keep doing my man like that? That's, you know what? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find that because I want to find who this guy is. But yeah, but it's like they give him that that <laughs> that that wimpy like. So you uh, think you're yeah. gonna find us, huh? We're gonna I get you. All of you. <laughs> you know what? Go get them. You, you, you get them, <laughs> dude. And it's like you're sitting here, like, as a kid when I was watching it, I was like, that dude is fucking hell is scary. You know? Yeah. You're, yeah, but yeah. As an as an adult, you're like, fuck is this guy? Why does he sound like this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, that's the one thing. Some of the movies, I'll admit, <laughs> don't hold up as well, but. 
uh, it's a nostalgia thing for me. I mean, and just, you know, his fighting is just amazing, man. Like, yeah, that'll yeah. save all the movie. You, you literally sit through all the silliness and the bad dialogue and all that just to see him fight. Just to see him surrounded by 20 guys and take off his shirt. Jeez. Flex and you're like, oh, here we go. He's going to tear everybody up right now. That was all you cared about. You know? Let me ask you this, man. And I can re- I can tell you right now, the first time that I've ever seen him take some nunchucks and do the and he's doing it every you know mm-hmm. when did you first pick up some nunchucks and how many times did you fuck yourself up playing with them i was about seven years old okay um it was halloween my friend and i wanted to be ninjas <laughs> but our parents didn't buy us uh our <laughs> ninja costumes they bought us other stuff so what we ended up doing was wearing black jeans and like these black Lee windbreakers. And then we take our t-shirts over our face, you know, like this, tie it and put it over. And my friend's dad, who, by the way, was like six, four black dude, big Afro. Yeah. Yeah. Had like shitload of fucking martial arts stuff in his closet. Bruce so, Leroy. <laughs> there it is. Bruce <laughs> Leroy is right there. So he had a couple of nunchucks and surprise. I don't, you know, honestly, I don't remember if he let us use them or if we just stole them out of the closet. We probably stole them out of the closet. <laughs> you and had I, to bean the shit out of my lip it, <laughs> the first the first move it was just and and yeah. it was <laughs> swollen like so i had to cover it i had to really be a ninja because i couldn't let my mom see my swollen lip from the nunchuck but yeah i don't see those those are i think more dangerous for the user personally. you know what man they should we should we should come up with a movie like that they did the christmas story and they were saying that i want to be bigger no you shoot your eye out you shoot your eye we should do a movie just like that mom dad i want nunchucks no you'll fuck your lip up you know, fuck your forehead up. And like at the end of the movie, at the end of the Christmas, like we give him nunchucks and he's like, oh, <laughs> they were right. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, that to me, what was funny about that is when everybody first saw Bruce Lee with nunchucks, the first mm-hmm. thing everybody said was, where can I get one? Yep. They were illegal <laughs> everywhere right you could even if you we had this store in the mission back then and it was called the martial arts store you could buy everything there right but of course what's the first thing you got to be 21 and over to buy these things and i didn't know anyone who was 21 to say buy this for me can you carry some nunchucks yes (laughs) there was a store in japan town where they sold kung fu outfits you know the black outfit with the kung fu shoes Mm -hmm. they had nunchucks there too again got to be 21 and over to buy these nunchucks so what's yeah. the next thing us middle school kids are doing we're taking broomsticks and this is it's funny because this is from a, a white kid who showed us how to do it nice <laughs> he goes take a broomstick cut it in half make sure they're even i was like all right you take one of the chains like you do for the doors he uh-huh. goes, make sure it's an old chain you take that chain you put it on one and you take a nail and you just pound it in he goes, and you do the same thing to the other side and make sure it's even. There's your nunchucks. All nice. right. Sure enough, we were dumb enough to do it. But mm. we're getting a nail that's like probably like, you know, not even an inch long. <laughs> and we're swinging this stick all over the place. Same yeah, we, we were we were killing each other back in the days. <laughs> <laughs> we were, there was a point where my middle school would always check certain kids. Mm. Backpack <laughs> checks, and then we were smart because we were we would we would tuck it in our in our leg and yeah, put yeah. our pant over it, right? Right, right? They were they were frisking us pretty much, yeah. you know, like, hey, we heard you got nunchucks. I'm like, what are you talking about nunchucks? We got no nunchucks. And sure You're enough, like, hmm, I yeah. don't have any nunchucks. I have no nunchucks. <laughs> like, what are you even talking about like, here? <laughs> like Eric, why are you why are you talking like that? <laughs> What are you Go to about? detention. Nunchucks. <laughs> yeah, I eventually had to switch over to the uh, the paper towel um, yeah. roll. <laughs> yeah, that with some string, it was a lot safer, and I could yeah. beat myself all I wanted, and I was good to go. No, it's funny because in detention, the teacher who was there was this hippie guy, and I did go to detention for having nunchucks. Uh, <laughs> he was this hippie guy who was like, "Hey, you know, it's cool that you wanted to do something different." But you got to know it's illegal to have that. So he told us why it was illegal. The wood yeah, yeah. is dangerous. It can hurt somebody. He goes, mm-hmm. but if you guys really want to play with them and he goes, let me show you how to make them. So he showed us, he took, you know, rolls of a newspaper. Mm-hmm. He rolled them up to where it was stiff, but not hard enough to kill each other. Right. right? And then he took a string instead of paper, took a string, took some tape. We taped it around this thing. 
There you go. We got some paper nunchucks. Mm, nice. And yeah. then kids were running around with paper nunchucks. <laughs> Uh, you we still were, could do some damage with a, with a newspaper. I'm just saying. You could. But we're like, hey, this is not wood. It's yeah. paper nunchucks. But yeah. thank you to Bruce Lee for coming Seriously. out with that and showing us that shit, this like, weapon alone. And it's funny because I can't think of anybody. Have you ever heard of anybody getting arrested because they were fighting with nunchucks or <laughs> they took out nunchucks? No. no. I, 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 not that I know of anyway. I mean, I, I think <laughs> I don't know anybody that was good with nunchucks. Honestly, like most people I knew, they, they just get beat up by themselves. <laughs> but I, I want to know, I want to know besides demonstration and showing mm-hmm. us how good you are with nunchucks, mm-hmm. maybe in old school China, they were actually used for what they were used for, but. Right. What else can you use them for other than demonstration? I mean, they're illegal now, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can't you, you can't really walk around with any weapons any, yeah. anywhere. So, but I guess they're concealable if you if you know how to use them. I still like I don't think I've ever seen anyone who could whip some ass with <laughs> with nunchucks. No, I mean, if I saw somebody and you know we're like talking shit and we want to fight and he takes out some nunchucks, I mean, the first thing I'm gonna think of is like, dude, this guy's a Bruce Lee fan. Mm-hmm. He's a Bruce Lee fan. It's like, I'm all right, su- I'm gonna sweep the leg. How am I gonna take this? You know, I'm gonna get this. Way. I'm gonna take out my jacket. And I'm gonna roll it up, and yeah. as soon as you swing, I'm taking your nunchucks. <laughs> there, game's over. Dude. I won. Man, but you know, like I was really trying to think. You know, besides Bruce Lee, especially at that time, was there anyone to carry that that whole that martial arts cape? And there really wasn't. You know, no. like if it was, I don't, I realistically don't see you know uh, van damme and 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 uh who's the other white guy uh chuck norris chuck norris and 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 steven seagal oh and, yeah they're... you know i don't see these movies happening i don't yeah. see the ninja turtles becoming popular cartoon i don't i just don't see how it gets here that fast and becomes that big yeah. if it wasn't for him and that's crazy to think because you rarely can you ever pinpoint something like a movement to one person yeah you know yeah. and 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 it like it feels great because you know that was what he wanted to do was bring east and, and west together like because his his dad traveled and he was born here and and came back here later like he just had the love for both sides and yeah. was just there's that that one interview where i, I I forget what the guy asked him. It had, had something to do about him being Asian or something like that. And he was just like, we're all, I'm part of one race and that's the human race, you know? Yeah. And he wanted to, that's why he didn't care to train, you know, black people, white people, whoever. Yeah. Like, what, yeah, this, he, this he is believed, an art, you know? Man, to have him here now with what's going on with the world, with everything going on in the world, man, he would be the perfect voice of reason with what's going on right now. Um yeah. If he was still around, um, uh, the good thing about him talk about you talking about his influences and all that stuff. We're gonna we can even talk about Star Wars and mm-hmm. you know when I heard George Lucas when they when they asked George Lucas a question about you know the whole kicking thing and he mentions you know well you know I have to have a Jedi kick because you know they can only do so much with a sword and they said was that a martial art in- influence? He goes yeah he goes I I grew up a Bruce Lee fan, you know so having a Jedi use their force and then kick you know another person away that was more of a martial art thing but to us we're looking at it as like oh shit that's pretty cool the jedi can just do that right right yeah at the end we're like where did they get that kick from you know damn that we didn't realize that came all the way back from the bruce lee days yeah you know and and and, uh you know uh mortal Kombat and street fighter like fighting games martial arts fighting video games in general that wouldn't have been a thing you know Because let's face it, most of us don't have the skills he possessed. Nope. Um, you know, if you took karate or taekwondo when you're a kid, not many people continue to, to you know, the higher levels. Yep. So you get to live that dream of being a martial artist through the video game and do all mm-hmm. these cool jumps. Um, um, what's the guy's name from Mortal Kombat who was pretty much Bruce Lee? Like, mm-hmm. Was it not Luke Cage? Like, uh, uh, no. Um, I know who you're talking about. I forget Luke his Kang, name. I think that is. Yeah, Luke Kang. Luke Kang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, it's just amazing. You think about all the how much he affected so many things. Yeah. You know. April twenty fourth, HBO Max, Mortal Kombat. 
Oh, nice. Just in HBO case you, Max, man, I'm just in case you didn't HBO know. Max right oh, now. God, I'm loving all the streaming platforms that we have right now. Yeah, um, that's one good byproduct of COVID. Everybody stepped a game up as far yes. as the streaming goes. Thank you, guys. Um, but video games, man, we can talk about video games. Every video game that we play always has that one character that has to be a Bruce Lee character. Mm-hmm. I remember when Street Fighter first came out, they were really upset that you didn't have a Bruce Lee type character there. It took yeah. what Street Fighter two or three till they finally right. brought that Asian guy who was mm-hmm. supposed to be Bruce Lee, but he wasn't really yeah. Bruce Lee. But yeah, you, we all knew he was Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like that's how a big influence he is. Is that you have a video game who was already popular without him, but people still kicked and screamed and said, hey, where is he? We want yeah. him in this video game. And they yeah. brought him. Brought him, yep. you know. I never used him because I was already used to, you know, Ryu and Ken. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, sorry, I probably should have used him. I was always terrible at those damn games. Oh, man. I was I was only good against myself. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> On easy. <laughs> On easy. <laughs> I can beat Zagat so many times on easy. Then when I'm ready to go up to medium, nope, it's going back to easy. Shit, another thing too, another influence, man. I'm from Staten Island, Wu Tang. Yeah, I had Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> like seriously, no, honestly, like their sound. Uh, a lot of it, if if you know anything about the Wu Tang Clan and and the RZA, who was kind of the one that brought everyone together, brought the group together, all the MCs he knew and everything. His style was literally from him watching all these kung fu flicks from that that time we were talking about. And he was so influenced by it that he not only did he try to bring these guys together, like there was some sort of clan, like martial art. He wanted to think in that sort of way and he wanted to do everything with these sort of same ideals. And then his music, they're all samples from classic kung fu movies. And and they and you know that that kind of uh, terrible quality sound from the '70s era where the you know song starts and it's real treble high and just yeah, yeah, yeah. off, but that kind of gritty rough sound he would sample these and loop these and that made Wu Tang sound and that made the yeah. phenomenon that they were. And again, I don't think you have that without Bruce Lee. Yeah. Because those movies wouldn't have been popular. Maybe they would have had few people that, you know, discovered them and, and would have been maybe like a niche thing. But I don't think it would have been mainstream like it was. So it's like just amazing all the things you can go on and on about that, that probably wouldn't be around because of him. I mean, Bruce Lee, just just Bruce Lee alone. Again, influential. He was, he was a good he, – he was everything that we wanted in a person from his martial arts to, you know – his he was a loving father to his kids yeah. um and you know he 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 was definitely family first so if you you look at the way he was as an actor as a person and then look him as a husband and a father it was always family first you know and and after his kids was born he was still about yes let's get this perfect movie out but let me make sure my kids are taken care of mm-hmm. and you know how many guys you know now that would still think that way i mean there's a there's plenty of guys who still think that way but right. For someone back in the 70s to think about that before himself, I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. again, you know, I kind of wish he did not die the way he did. Um, in the movie Game of Death, and I'm going to bring this up because he that's the movie that he died and he didn't get to finish the movie. The finish. Yeah. That's the one where we're talking about with Bruce Lee. I mean, with, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul, yeah. yeah. So he filmed the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar bar film or part but he didn't get to film everything else so i don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever seen the movie and mm-hmm. you know the whole movie is like he's climbing towers till yeah. he gets to the boss and there's scenes where they're using another person's face or they're using bruce lee's face but it's another person's body mm-hmm. and it's just terrible it was like the worst dub yeah. i can't even call it cgi i wish it was cgi back then yeah yeah, yeah. um there's something where I heard that there's someone who wants to put that movie, restitch that movie together, mm-hmm. but digitally enhance Bruce Lee in there to make it look a little more cleaner. Yeah, um, yeah. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like that they should do that? Or do you feel they should just leave it alone? Um, You know, I, I at this point, I think they should. Only because yeah. I don't think, in my opinion, it should have ever been made. 
Um, yeah. They didn't get to finish it. Most of the footage, I think it was like 100 hours of footage. Most of that footage was for the climax of the movie, yeah. which is why you don't see much of a scene change and all that. So as it stands, it probably shouldn't have, shouldn't have been made. So I don't think someone attacking it now, if they do it with, you know, the respect he deserves and as a fan and with the technology we have now, I think if someone does it and they, they can, if they do it the right way, I think it'll be pretty cool. Only because, you know, we look at um, Paul Walker, right? He yeah. passed during uh, Fast and the Furious uh, 7, 8, I don't know. I lost yeah, count. But six or something. Yeah, maybe six. seven. Maybe it was seven. Maybe it was seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, we, we went to watch that. I'm not like the biggest Fast and the Furious fan, but I, I do enjoy the series. And, and uh, um, out of respect for him, we went to watch it. And I was curious to see how how they did it. And, I mean, it was pretty much seamless. I mean, you can maybe kind of assume where yeah. where it was CGI, but for the most part, it's not distracting. And yeah. and and you, it was done well. And if they could do something like that, where they're not having to use maybe so much CGI, I think it'd be cool because we've seen like these this deep fake technology that we have now, where I mean, they could take a picture of Harriet Tubman and make her move around and look like she's super yeah. real. So there's so much footage of him in the past that I think they have enough to work with that they could probably do something pretty cool. Yeah. With it, you know, in my yeah. opinion, I mean, I totally agree, man. I mean, um, yeah, game of death to me never should have been made. Uh, and after watching it and rewatching it, there's a point where I don't want to watch it anymore because you already know this is not Bruce Lee anymore. Like we're, we're going to the movies to watch Bruce Lee. Yeah. And you know, after he kills spoiler alert, after he kills Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and he goes up to the next boss, you already know that's not him anymore. Cause he said, like you said, they shot a lot of films or, or movies or scenes, him fighting Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Right. Yeah. And then he didn't even get to finish the climax scene where he fights the boss at the end. So do him justice. I mean, I think they should, you know, I mean, you know, it's up to Shannon Lee, who's now in charge of all Bruce Lee's things. Thing, yeah. If you're listening, Shannon Lee, if you hear <laughs> this, you know, maybe then don't redo the whole movie. Just touch it up yeah. to where, right. you know, digitally enhance him in there, put him in there and see what yeah. you guys can do. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would I would totally be for it. I think it, someone can do do it well. Um. And you're talking about his family and you know him, him, his untimely passing. Like, what are you? What are your thoughts on, you know, the 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 Lee curse? You know, um, for, and for people that don't know, you know, his his father, Bruce Lee's father, passed away unexpect unexpectedly um, a week after his son uh, Brandon was born, and then you know he passed young. Bruce Lee passed at what thirty two? I think it was 30, right? 32. Thirty two. 32 and then brandon passed away a uh, freak accident in a movie yeah. um young so there's people that say that there's this this there was this family curse or something like that what, do you, what are your thoughts on that you know they touched on that in the movie the dragon right the one with jason scott lee yeah, and and i, I want to say he that really affected him because for us for for linda and maybe even shannon to say let's show these people bruce lee had these demons and these demons was really bothering him um man i, I there could have been something in his head that that, that yeah these demons mm -hmm. are here i mean like hell look yeah. my dad dies right after my son's born mm -hmm. um and the demons told me this was going to happen yeah. um i mean everyone's beliefs are different when it comes to certain things and yeah. his belief was pretty strong uh and again in the movie they, they they showed us perfectly they even show him fighting one of the demons in his dreams right it's like mm -hmm. yeah so yeah there could have been something there could the curse have been real mm -hmm. possibly i mean hell this is a different culture <laughs> that i know nothing about you know besides the food and what we see on tv and what we watch and what we hear their spiritual culture could be so much different than what we believe in mm -hmm. so if someone put a curse on the the Lee family and said, this is going to happen, you got to prevent it by doing this. And mm. Bruce Lee took precautions when he, you know, when he was still alive, could the curse have killed Bruce and Brandon? I mean, possibly. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, the whole Brandon Lee death to me, to me, it's like, how the hell do you shoot a guy with a real, yeah. with real bullets? Yeah. You know? I mean, for me, out of the whole thing, his son's death is the only one to me that's, you know, weird. You know, you talk about his father just because these guys physically were healthy. We don't know what their eating habits were. Yeah, you know we what don't. I mean? We like don't. he, he, the day Bruce Lee passed away that whole day, he was suffering from a headache. Who knows what? health issues he had going on yeah he, he worked a lot probably didn't get much sleep still very active and then he you know is complaining of a headache and that his friend or whoever gives him this sedative when he goes to sleep something i forget the name of the the, the medication but it's something mixed with aspirin and something yeah. he gave to, gave to people with anxiety and and whatever and goes to sleep and he doesn't wake up so you know, for me, it's believable that maybe there was a health issue going on, something like that. But his son, you know, who who was on his way to becoming his own star yeah. in his own right, you know, to, to, to be killed on a movie set by a real gun. Yeah. How the hell does that happen? Why is there even a real gun on set if it's not, yeah. you know, security or police officer? Like, what the hell? You know, that that to me was was fishy. Even as a kid, I was young when it happened, but I was still like, wait, what? I yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, if you were someone who was trying to destroy the Lee family and, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I'm saying, you know, I don't want to say Chinese mafia. I don't want to say triads. I don't want to say anything like that. But if you were just trying to destroy the Lee family and you give Bruce the the drink or the the thing mm -hmm. and then he dies with you know they call it cerebral edema which is like swelling of the brain um th that's an opportunity right there right it's like hey he's suffering of a headache let me give him something to help him with his headache but really i'm working for this triad and this is a way to kill him right right, right. so now he's gone he's dead his son's you know, living his legacy. And he's like, let me live off my father's legacy. Now you're shooting a movie like the crow where it's very violent. There's a lot of killing. There's a lot of shooting. Any one of those scenes could have been perfect mm -hmm. for anyone who's trying to sabotage the Lee family mm -hmm. and say, we're going to put a fake, we're going to put a prop gun here with a real bullet in there or whatever, a gun with whatever a, it was, what, right. yeah, whatever it was. And that's how he's going to die. That's what we're going to do, you know? And they did it. You know, I mean, that's the reason why Shannon is not in the movie business in the front line of the movie. Yeah, she's doing yeah. a lot of things in the back, but she's still trying to live or, or let us not forget her father's legacy, which is cool. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Yeah, But yeah, you know, it's like we talked about this in the conspiracy theory in our podcast was, was there people out there who was really trying to just sabotage that family? You yeah. know, hey, yeah. we need to kill you now. We need to stop you from saying this or doing this. Right. And then we're going to do the same thing with your son. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's possible. Or, I mean, and I'll, I'll play devil's advocate here. Or could it be, you know, that situation that we see so many times when you have someone who's so loved, um, celebrity, whether acting, singing, whatever, they're so loved and they, they, they pass at a young age and untimely age and people just don't want to accept that. Yeah, You know, like you look at Elvis, how long has Elvis been alive? How many sightings have we had? Tupac's been living in Cuba, apparently, for the last 20 years. Like, you know, there's just people care so much about certain, you know, people, you know, celebrities that they just don't want to let go and they yeah. can't. It yeah. just doesn't make sense. And then, I mean, of course, it's Bruce Lee. He's he's this, he's everybody's like a hero. He's this amazing physique. I mean, he's a little guy, but he was like ripped beyond belief. And then. Yeah the best martial artist in the world how you know how how could he like they just maybe they just don't want to accept it and yeah. and, and they find other ways to 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 justify it but i mean i, I know, think either way it's sad i mean i always i always go back to when they told him not to train the westerners not to teach them their secret um and he was the first one to say i'm going to do and teach whoever i want I think that kind of pissed off. You did not only piss off the Kung Fu karate community. You pissed off kind of the nation of China mm -hmm. and said, you can't do this. This has been our secret for the past, you know, thousands of years. Yeah. And now here you are wanting to teach them. Yeah. I think that 
on top of the demons that he had going through his head or going through in his head mm-hmm. kind of, you know, added a whole lot of things. I mean, you know, hell, we're, we're sitting here how many years later and we're still trying to figure out how he really died. You know, yeah. was yeah. it accidental? Was it, yeah. was it, you know, plot, you know, yeah. but I mean, and it also could have even been, again, it, he, it was a very uh, racist time. Yeah. Openly racist <clears throat> time. You know, yes. it could have, there could have been, you know, white people that didn't like him. Yeah spreading his 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 eastern culture or something yeah. you know and becoming big and influencing the youth yeah. because again like we said a lot of kids wanted to be bruce lee yeah you know didn't matter what race they were they had they were dressing apart so but yeah, it's kind of funny you mentioned that because in the 70s when he was getting popular kids in america we wanted to be firefighters we wanted to be policemen we wanted to be all that but you had that group Mm-hmm. That no, I want to be a kung fu artist because Bruce yeah. Lee. And in America, you're like, we can't. You can't be. A, that's that's a Chinese culture. You can't right, do right. that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, your your thought of maybe it was you know someone mm-hmm. in on on this side of the pond that wanted him dead because it's yeah. like, hey, we can't let this Asian guy influence our American kids into doing something that at the time they couldn't teach. Yeah. Because they probably didn't have that many studios or dojos or whatever around yet, right? Yeah, yeah. So they probably couldn't teach that. So it's like, yeah. we got to take them out, man. We got to find a way to take them out. Yeah. It's sad, yeah. but you know that's that's sad. the truth. It sucks. it sucks. Yeah. Um. Again, going back to Shannon Lee and doing the stuff that she's doing, mm-hmm. and this is going to bring up to the continuation of what she's doing for her dad. He did write a couple books or stories mm-hmm. before he passed away. And Shannon decides to take these stories and put them into a TV show. Um, so I don't know if you've seen the movie called Warrior. Not The Warrior, uh, but it's called Warrior. Right now it's on HBO Max. And okay. it's, um, uh, I'll pull up his name here, Andrew Koji, who plays the main character in this movie. And it doesn't talk about Bruce Lee, but it mm-hmm. talks about how the Chinese was brought over from China back in the 1800s to San Francisco Mm -hmm. to help build with the railroads right Right. and you want to talk about how bad the chinese had it back then watch Mm -hmm. this show there's three seasons out right now i watched the first season two season two i'm still trying to catch up there's so many to watch but trying to catch up on season two Mm -hmm. but this movie has a lot of martial arts so if you want to talk about martial arts and Mm -hmm. good martial arts this has a lot of martial arts and it's not just it's not just chinese versus chinese it's like Mm -hmm. you know you got the you know back in the 1800s san francisco was a melting pot of Irishmen, right? Mm-hmm. So now you have the Irish versus the Chinese. So it's oh. kind of a cool, kind of a cool movie. If you can handle that yeah. kind of violence and kind of hit that, you know, like there is that, that subtle racism, you know, yeah, yeah, you're going to hear it. Um, especially in the 1800s, you know, they gave Chinese mm-hmm. guys a different names, right? You know, they yeah, gave them yeah. names. Um, so if you can handle that, man, I definitely suggest, and I'm not talking about you, Joe, I know you can, right, right, I'm talking right. about everyone else who wants to watch a good show, um, the, the Warrior. And it was on Cinemax, but HBO bought the rights, so now it's on HBO Max. So you can watch oh, all cool. the seasons on there. And again, Shannon Lee does say, this is the, this is from the writings of my dad, you know, before he passed away. So, um, I'm not sure how far into the writings they go into or did mm-hmm. they did they expand it later on? Because, again, there's season three right now. And oh, once okay. you watch season one, you're going to get hooked. Trust me. All right. Yeah, I'm probably going to, as soon as we get off here, I'll probably start <laughs> throw it on and watch it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, kind of watch it, uh, kind of watch it, you know. I mean, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of nudity. A lot of nudity, mm, so gotcha. I'm just going to tell you that right it now. Is, it is HBO Max. HBO Max. Well, <laughs> this is before, you know, 1800 San Francisco, there was work gotcha. and prostitution. So that's all I got to <laughs> tell you guys. <laughs> uh, it was a different type of gold rush. <laughs> different type of gold rush. But, man, living the legacy of Bruce Lee, man. I mean, you know, yeah. like you said, growing up, I was fortunate enough to watch some of his movies. But not, you know, I didn't get to watch it while he was still alive. I was, I was mm-hmm. only one when he, when he passed away. But right. in, in the mid seventies, growing up and being able to watch Bruce Lee and watch his stuff, and not really knowing that he died yet, because you know you're watching someone on TV and everyone on TV is mm-hmm. real, right? It took yeah. me a while to realize, like, God, this guy's dead. I think my dad told me like ten thousand times, like he's dead already. <laughs> he's not around anymore. Yeah. But as a kid, yeah. you're watching this guy like kick 10 people's ass and you're he's doing it so easily you're like i want to be that guy you know i want to be that guy and yeah Yeah. i was one of those kids who grew up who said hey don't fuck with me 
Mm -hmm. I know karate, (laughs) you know? And as soon as that one kid's like, all right, show me. You're like, not right now. Yeah, that's that's only for (laughs) self-defense. It's not right now. Master Lee said we cannot do that. (laughs) I'll tell you, man, I knew so many, so many kids like that. that My my dad had a friend and and not to go off on a tangent, but this guy. (laughs) <laughs> so he was a little guy. He uh every time he saw him had had uh military fatigues on. Oh my god. And he he loved my dad because my he knew my dad was was in the Marines and yeah. always wanted to pick his brain. And uh one day he saw us outside and he invited us and he invited us inside. He lived in our building. He's like, I'll come in real quick. And my dad's like, All right, and he drags me in there with him. And this guy had every sort of sword katana like wow. he had all these blades and nunchucks and they were just all scattered across the walls right and i mean a cool collection i was i wanted to touch everything right yeah of course um we were probably in there a couple minutes and we leave and my dad grabs me and says i don't ever want you talking to that man <laughs> ever again <laughs> when you see him you go the other way <laughs> and i didn't understand why <laughs> And he was, yeah, as I got older, I was like, oh, okay. He was that, he was that guy. He, he, he knew, he knew martial arts. He was always outside in the middle of the projects, you know, doing his, uh, Tai Chi and all this stuff. And, and pretty sure he got robbed a lot of times. Playing that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yeah. It was Kung Fu fighting. Yeah. No, I mean, I was, I was always the the crane. We'll (laughs) we'll even go back to that, man. Music. Like you said, Wu Tang, Mm -hmm. but then. That song Kung Fu Fighting, that has all Bruce Lee written all over it, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> Fast as lightning, Bruce mm-hmm. Lee, you know. Man, that's 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 crazy. I mean, just the one guy influenced the whole world. And yeah. and and from this day, he's still influencing us. You know, the movies that he's yeah. that he's created, people are coming back and doing movies and all that stuff. Yeah. Will there ever be someone to replace him? No. I don't think no, anyone. And Shannon, think so. Shannon already made it clear that she doesn't want her kids. Anything has, I mean, she's going to make them remember their grandfather, but doesn't want right. them to do anything about, you know, acting or getting into movies yeah. or even probably, yeah. probably not even teaching them martial arts, which is kind of right. sad because, you know, mm-hmm. someone like him. Yeah. Let's, you know, move on and give, give him, you know, yeah. give us more things to remember him by. But, I, I understand, you know. Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, she actually does this. Uh, it's Bruce Lee Day at at uh, what is the ballpark called yeah. now? Oracle. Um, Oracle uh, Park. Oracle? And, yeah. yeah. And uh, I happened to go one year just by chance. I, I got some tickets for free and um, me and my wife went and happened to be Bruce Lee Day. And man, it was awesome. They had these these little kids dressed like uh, just like him in uh, I was at the game of death with the, the yellow uh, yeah, outfit yeah. with the white stripes. And they're doing all these like floor exercises and flips and all this wow. stuff. And like giving out t-shirts and it's like it's a really cool experience and I, I was glad I, I went and they do it every year um hopefully this year with baseball starting back up and things opening up they'll, yeah. they'll be able to do it again and it's it's really it's a nice uh nice time and they really pay homage to him and, yeah. and she's there she's there and her mom is wow is, you know still around she was there um and his grandkids so yeah it's really cool if you're ever in san francisco and you get a chance to go to that game and you're a fan of bruce lee do it for sure wow and kill bill Took the move, Killed took the t- took the took the the yellow outfit from from you know mm-hmm. Game of Death and brought it in that movie. Um, yeah. But again, also, and I mentioned this the last time. If you guys are ever in Seattle, um, visit definitely visit his gravesite. Him and Brandon's gravesite. Um, go mm-hmm. there on a weekend. Try not to go on a Sunday because the last time we went on a Sunday, it was closed. Um, go yeah. there on a Saturday. Pay your respects. You know. Um, say a little prayer for the guy and and Mm -hmm. and it's very spiritual when you're there because you're 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 gonna sit there and you're gonna be like god this guy one person influenced Mm -hmm. the world and i want to say the world you know not just us not just china but influenced the world and and you know who knows maybe someone in mars right now is watching bruce lee flicks and you know (laughs) seriously getting those uh transmissions you know his wife said she had him uh buried in seattle because he he just enjoyed the time that he spent there so much. Yeah. It was something about Seattle that he really liked and, and he was really happy there. So let me ask you this another man. thing. Have you ever been to Seattle? Um, no, but that's that's on my bucket list. I definitely want to go there. Now that I know he's there, I mean I was already planning on going to yeah. Seattle, but 
didn't know that he was, you know. There is something man. spiritual and different about Seattle that mm -hmm. I always tell myself that once everything is done here in San Francisco, there's a possibility the Pacific North is where I want to move to. It's funny. I mean, just. I've, I've, I've said the same thing. With, uh, it's yeah, funny. I mean, just the weather is exactly the way it is here. The city, mm -hmm. the city of Seattle is exactly how downtown San Francisco is. But mm -hmm. once you leave the outskirts of Seattle and go into those little suburbs, there's something about mm -hmm. those suburbs that that you're just like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. I want to be here. And, and to be able to see Mount Rainier, to see, yeah. you know, the snow on the other side of the of the banks. And even if you, they tell you on a nice day, you can see Alaska. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I definitely agree. I, I felt that way when I went to, to Portland and I remember, you know, it's not as far north, but it's, it's up there. And I, yeah. I told my wife the same thing. I was like, man, you know, I could easily see myself retiring here. Just, yeah. there's just something about, uh, I don't know. So yeah, very similar vibe to, to here, but it has its own kind of thing. And it's yeah. still, it reminds me of, and from what people have, have told me, but f also from what I experienced when I first got here, um, people have that kind of like freeness that one time you had here, you know, like, uh, uh like the whole hippie movement where it's just yeah. kind of free to be you and no one's going to judge you. And it's just kind of that whole hippie vibe, but not like, yeah. you know, hippie, all right, man, necessarily just yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of openness, open-mindedness and everybody kind of doing their thing and you can, no one's bothering you, but yeah. everyone's friendly and it's just, yeah, cool vibe, man. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if ever comes a time that I decide that I'm done with San Francisco, you know, a lot of people's like, "Oh, you're gonna move to Hawaii." I'm like, "No, mm -hmm. not really, not really." You know, I I, <laughs> I like going to Hawaii, but I don't know if that's a place where I want to, you know, think. The two places that I I pretty much have thought really hard is somewhere in Arizona, not sure where, nice quiet spot in Arizona, or Seattle, and. There's just the only thing that's killing me about Seattle right now is the weather. And, you know, I'm not a big snow yeah. person. You grew up in New York. Man. You know what it was like when it's snowy. I'm mm -hmm. not big when it comes to that. So, you know, that's the only thing. But, man, Seattle is definitely a cool place to visit. And for her to bury him there, I and yeah. and if you see where his grave is and you turn mm -hmm. around, you're looking at his grave and you turn around and you look behind him or what he's looking at, right. it's like downtown Seattle. You know, the space oh, needle funny. and all that. It's like, wow, you yeah. know, it's like this is the perfect place, the perfect vantage yeah. point. Oh, that's funny that you mention that because that's where they had him and his wife had their first date. He, um, when they met, he was actually uh, training her like he did everyone else. And yeah, uh, she, she tells a story where he, he kind of does this move and he brings her down to the ground and he's like ends up on top of her and then he's like oh. do you want to go to space needle <laughs> and she's like uh yeah sure and that, that ended up being their first day <laughs> you sure he didn't say do you feel my space needle <laughs> <laughs> she kept a pg <laughs> uh is that what i feel <laughs> do you feel my space needle dragon <laughs> do you feel my space needle it's the dragon we call it the dragon like what was the what was the birth of the dragon, Linda? Oh, what was that space needle line? Yeah, space <laughs> <laughs> it's the first time I saw the dragon. <laughs> oh man, I mean this is this is fun. I mean, you know, for someone like him, for us to still talk about him and for a yeah. lot of people to still remember him, it just shows us and shows the world how big of an influence he was just as a person, as a martial artist, mm -hmm. and as everything else. And, you know, you know, and he'll long live in our memories, you know, glad for Always. TV right now and you being able to watch it and, you know, and yeah. being uh, able to just get caught up in a lot of the stuff that he, he's done. It's, you know, and kids these days, yeah. kids nowadays don't know what it was like, you know, watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to be like, yeah, that's phony. You know, like they're not really mm -hmm. talking. It's like, that's how yeah. it was back then. You know? <laughs> have you have you showed uh, your boys any oh, old yeah. Kung Fu or Bruce Lee? Do, do yeah. they like him or they just yeah. make fun of him? Um, yeah. The big boss... In 1971, you can tell it was filmed in 1971. Um, yeah. Painful. You can tell. You can tell that was 1971 movie. But they like the big boss. They love Fist of Fury and Enter the Dragon is just like, you know, I mean, come yeah. on. Enter the Dragon, you got the guy with the one hand. And at the end of the yeah, movie, yeah. he takes out the little claw and like, you know, like, you know <laughs> yeah. of course, what does the kids say nowadays? Like, he's the original Wolverine. <laughs> like, and oh, you think yeah, about it, right. you're like, 
Yeah, you know, yeah, I guess. maybe that's where they got it from. Yeah. Yeah. Did Stanley get could, that from? Did Stanley? <laughs> could be. Could be. Don't, don't want to throw it out there, but it could start a rumor that yeah, yeah. If it wasn't for Bruce Lee, there'd be no Wolverine. Yeah. So there's that Marvel character that's coming out. Uh, God, what's his name? He's he's um, he's coming out on Disney Plus. I forget his name. Hold on, I'm looking him up right now. Um, Shang Chi okay. is coming out on on Disney Plus. He's a Marvel superhero character, and he's supposed to be the Bruce Lee of the MCU. Like his martial artist, his martial arts skills, the way he is. So yes, Marvel did take a little influence off of Bruce Lee right. and added him on his, gotcha. added him on there. So. Hopefully we'll see him soon. Hopefully that's going to be a good some good thing to watch Dis- moving forward. But. Disney is really digging into those Marvel crates, huh? Oh, and they're like, look, what other obscure characters do you have that no one knows about? <laughs> like, hey man, that's, Gardens of the Galaxy. That's something we should talk about, man. Like you know, I mean, they Disney yeah. plus Marvel plus Kevin Feige really yeah. brought one Marvel back to life, and Disney mm-hmm. said, you know what, we're gonna buy you. Yeah, you know, they put we're the gonna we're it. gonna buy you because your ideas are gonna be till the end of time. And so smart enough they did. So oh, yeah. props to yeah. props to Disney, props to Marvel. So if there was ever a, I guess a corporation to to buy out Marvel that I was happy with, it was it was Disney. Just because growing up, you know, with in Disney and and, and everything that they do, knowing yeah. what they're capable of, it's like all right. This, this should be cool. I wish, I wish Sony would just give up X Men and let fucking Marvel and Disney have their way with it. But uh, they're killing me. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Disney's already bought or bought the rights to Fox. I don't know if you know that. No, I did not. Yeah, so Disney has the rights to Fox, mm-hmm. which owns X Men, which owns you know the the whole X Men characters yeah. so it's just a matter of are we marvel fans who've mm-hmm. been watching 14 years a bit 14 years or how very many years of iron man captain america and all this stuff are we ready mm-hmm. to see mutants on on this screen so yeah. yeah i have a feeling they'll slowly slowly build them up and slowly you know i mean like you know what we were going to talk about we were going to talk about um the Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, and this is something yeah. I want to bring up when we do talk about Falcon and Winter Soldier, but mm-hmm. in the scene where they were in Mandapur, right? Mm-hmm. That's Logan's hangout. Wolverine's hangout is Mandapur. So, and you know, Disney's so good for the, with the oh, Easter eggs, man. God, they, the, uh. <laughs> they're fucking writing. Just the way they write things, the way they put yeah. things together, the way they make you go, Fuck, I didn't see that coming. You know? Yeah. 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 Like, and they'll wow. give you clues. They'll give you subtle clues. And and then when you look back or you go back or someone comes out with an article, a BuzzFeed yeah. article, like, hey, did you know? And you're like, son of a bitch, how did I miss that? When That's did awesome. that happen? Exactly. And again, <laughs> let's talk about this in the next, you know, maybe the yeah, next podcast. Yeah. Um, we did uh-huh. me and Joe did have something in con- uh, something that we did want to talk about today, but we figured let's do Bruce Lee first. And then next yeah. week we'll uh we'll probably let you know. I'll probably tease you guys or let you guys know in the Instagram post. So if you guys don't follow us on Instagram, the ordinary Joe's podcast on Instagram, check us out there. And I'll probably tell you guys what we'll be talking about next week. And, you know, we'd like to hear your insights on, on the subject. And if you guys have comments or none of you guys have comments, you know, see how that goes. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know what you think. Let us know. Um, The ordinary Joe's podcast on Instagram, the ordinary Joe's podcast, gmail.com you know, reach out to us. We're always there. Someone's always answering. Someone is. <laughs> Somebody's there. Somebody's home. Someone's there. That's what we Someone's hire there. people for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's why do you think our thumb is uh, yeah. <laughs> sore right now with all the, all the emails we've been answering. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> all right, guys, this has been fun. This has been a cool topic. Um, stay tuned for next week. We definitely have something planned something that we want you guys your inputs about and then and, and yeah, are you fun. caught up are you caught up with it um yes well okay. almost today will be i'll be caught up by the end of day so, yeah. perfect perfect so we'll talk about it next week yeah. all right guys until then, until then we are the ordinary joes peace see ya <laughs>